Ryder just gave, just handing this, this headband over. Happy early Halloween. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is this? No, I'm not going to wear it. And she's like, mm, you have to wear it. I'm like, exactly. No. And you then I saw it. you, and I saw you, you're like, really? You have to wear it. The rabbit? You have to wear it. You want to change? <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. You want to change? Whatever. All right. well, we have a very interesting, very serious, very long stories today. Yeah, uh, and Joelle, which is actually uh, our first story uh, me- messenger, um, is there a limit of how many material that we can submit for Ugly Truth? No. Uh, you guys can write a book if you want to. You can spam our message board with Ugly Truth messages because th- we need them and we love them. Yeah. So, the more the merrier. Yeah. There we go. So, Joelle, yes. And uh, it's her story. Yeah. Pretty messed up, too. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I, I can't... Well, I was reading this. Well, whatever. We have to start yeah, so, first, and then uh, we need your patience, our listener. Yeah, you need your. we need your patience because... The second story is also long, so... Joelle, thank you so much, though, because you gave us details. Right, right. And we always ask for details. She even faxed a picture over to us. I know. I and know. So, I'm going to show it to you, but I'm not going to read the visit because that's... Yeah, this is just, really too personal. So, story. it's PowerPointed. Which is, thank goodness, because it's easy yeah, for us to like, read. I heard the baby writer, and she's like, oh, this is an original story. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's like, Woo! It's no. like a big old paragraph. It's like pages. <laughs> so it was PowerPointed, so thank you to our youngest writer for PowerPointing that yes, for us. thank you. So right. here are the biggest, big lump sum of what's going on. All right, here's the story. From U.S., Joelle. Okay, my fiancé and I need your help. Just for a little background, here's the brief history. First, the fiancé and I have been dating since 2005. I met his family then. They haven't liked me since then. His family thought I was controlling him, and he only did what I said, which isn't the case. In 2008, he hooked a bus to South Dakota to get away from them and was brought back to Indiana. His family caused a lot of tension between us. In 2010, he managed to sneak out and stay away and get his own place. His family found out where he lived and has been harassing here and there. Uh, Then it stopped. FYI, his dad is a cop, so he knows their limits. His mom is a master of manipulation. Okay, so fast forward to 2013. And his family started bothering us again. His dad will come uh, around a pounding on our door, and his mom would send notes with all of my fiance's childhood pictures saying, I have no use for these. Should we send a letter to tell them to cut it out? If we keep ignoring it, the issue might pick up again and involve my family like it did in the past. My whole out is this. If we send something, I uh, it might give them a hope that they can wear us down. So, what do you think? Should we send a letter or no? Thanks, ladies. Wow. And this is the... I don't know if you can see it. This is the picture of the the, 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 the note. Uh, mm-hmm. The envelope. The note that his mom uh, put it on the, on the door. Doorstep. Yeah, so... So yes, okay. This is uh, the the pic, the whole picture, and blah blah blah. So this is pretty serious problem. But the thing is, is uh, I I I want to know. So Joelle, you're listening right now. Is his background Asian? Because I feel that that would probably be a big factor here. No, I don't think it's Asian. Well, because the thing is, is because I can tell from his mom. Um, mom's and writing. Brain. Yeah. Well, because th- this is the thing. Um, obviously, the mom is sending out mixed signs. She's sending him. She's sending you guys baby pictures, saying we don't need these anymore. Mm-hmm. So pretty much, we're gonna cut him out of our lives. But that's not the case. He wants to get away from them, but they keep chasing after him. Right. Um, now I know that this is pretty hard for you, especially because you are probably pushing your uh, marriage back because of this. You guys have been dating for eight years now, and if you guys haven't been able to tie the knot yet... So we can understand that you guys are truly in love. Exactly. And despite the fact that his, you know, there's parents' problems there... I um, can't believe that Joel actually holds everything together for eight years. That's, yeah. That's I a mean, long time. Props to you for doing that, because, yeah. I mean, as a girl, 
to stick to, oh. I mean to stick by your guy through all of that yeah. that that cost that has you need a lot of patience with that yeah especially um if it involves the marriage problem then your family is important because it's the, it's marriage right so it's like family and family being a, a well, that's the thing. family, so Th- but that's more of the Korean right, aspect right, of still. two families coming together or Asians, right? Otherwise, they have to like keep running. Well, I mean, in the in the U.S., I mean, honestly, once you're 18, you're out of the house, right? And then if you get married, yes, the family comes, yeah, but and then kind of it is a different, okay. yeah, right. it's in-laws you don't have to really deal with uh-huh. unless it's the holidays. But in Korea but or in to be other, happy. yeah, I mean, and in other uh, Asian countries, yeah. it's more of two families coming together. Right. It's two households coming together, two titles. Yeah. So if this family is a professor family, then this family has to be this kind of family. Right, like a doctor. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. and it has to be like, you know, same <laughs> class. Uh, well, I know, uh, I know. But, but you know, still, like, uh, still, I mean, if you want to get married and, uh, you know, being close with uh, your husband's uh, family or, you know, friends with the mother-in-law, actually, that's the, the hardest thing in Korea. But I think it's important. But... I, I just feel very, um, sad. I can't say anything because you guys being just running, you guys didn't do anything, just try to be free from the, the, uh, the family, but, you know, just keep, keep, you know, the pounding on the door and the finding out. And but then running. again, that's, that's um, I don't, happened. I really don't want to do this to your fiance, but as a man, mm-hmm. what did he tell his parents? Right. That's what I'm asking. I mean, right. I know it's hard for any person to stand up to their parents, but I mean, if he really is in this relationship and he's running away from his family because he feels that they're suffocating them, mm. then he should have stood up and say, I'm out of the house. You know, I'm making my own decisions. I know it's going to be hard because no parent, no, nobody can do that to their parents. Right. But I mean, still, if he's to the point where he's running away from them obviously there's something there that it doesn't it might not just be you it might not be you as the problem for the source uh it might be uh just you know their personal problems and they're just you know blaming you for something else right okay, sure. and also the sending a, so for now this point sending a letter doesn't mean anything i think because this problem is like too serious because our joel was like thinking, you know, should we send the letter or not? Should we, yeah, so pretty much, should we say stop or not? Um, well, if his dad's a cop... I know, seriously, I mean, you can't really do anything about it. Um, I think for the rest of your lives, unless you guys resolve something, right. there's going to be, like, some major problems there, because he's going to probably hunt you down to the end of the of earth. Of course. <laughs> but, um, um, I'd have to say that I don't think it's you. Personally, from what I can see from the way the mother's acting... She's acting like a heartbroken schoolgirl. Right. So I'm guessing that maybe the because she's um, missing his uh, her yeah her son and uh, I know that this can be very extreme, but if we watch movies or dramas, you know we have certain mothers that get too attached to their sons. So we're talking about you know like in it's a it's normal in Korea. Also. No, but I mean not not just you know overly attached. I'm talking about like you know like a madly like, like a, literally in love like mentally like yeah like obsessed and you know we're talking about like you know significant other Mm -hmm. like they see their son as a man you know what i mean they fall in love with their sons about the girlfriend and exactly i mean we see this happening a lot in a lot of different countries Mm -hmm. um i'm thinking that if the dad is more of a lamb so if the dad is more of a quieter personality and the mom is the one that you're saying is the one of the master manipulation here then she might be the one that's a little bipolar. She could be a little bipolar in her Ugh. her status to the fact where she'll be like, no, I don't need him anymore. He's no longer my son. But then all of a sudden he's like, no, I need my son. So it <laughs> oh could my gosh. be a Do lot of different. Bipolar is like, oh, it's, but it's, it's terrible. No, but it's very serious as well. Of course it's serious. That's why this, you know, Joel was um, having a hard time for eight years. I can't. Wow, I can't believe that you actually did this and been through all these. And uh, from now on, we have to kind of give her the... We can't really give a solution, but, you know, we need 
We need to give her the real, actual advice. I don't it. think, Joelle, honestly, this is just my personal opinion. I don't think it's your fault. I think the mom is trying to filter an excuse on you. Yeah, I think your fiancé needs to move. Yeah, your, your fiancé needs to do something. Yeah, your fiancé needs to make some action there with his family. It's his family. It's his parents. Uh, whether the fact where he sits down and says, I am marrying her. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Or... I love you guys. I respect that you guys want to see me. Let's schedule, you know, dates to see each other. Yeah, why don't you um, send a letter to your fiance? Write a letter. Well, I mean, I'll, I think they're living with each other. That's why I know. I'm just they're... kidding. But, you know, I mean, I mean, be a man. Seriously. Yeah, I think your fiance needs to help you out with this one. It's not your problem to figure out. Uh, if it was really you as the problem, uh, uh Especially when he's. I think moms would be pretty darn straightforward if you were the problem. Right. You know I mean? They'd call you and be like, no, Miss Lee. Mm -hmm. And they would start changing their. Uh, they're aggressive. It would be on much you. more ugly. It so would they would be much, call, much yeah, more ugly. They'd be calling you to stop dating it. They would be kind of picking on you, not both of you. Right. But for them to kind of pick on him, right. you know, sending baby pictures of him. They're trying to pick stuff that, you know, he would feel as offensive. Yeah, you're hurtful. not babysitting and you're not you're not the one who's gonna just do care of everything. So just um you have to talk to your fiance and actually have to do together. Because yeah. this is marriage and uh, it's family involved, so I don't think I don't think this is uh, just the problem that you can you can serve. You have to serve it with your fiance. Yeah, I think your fiance needs to step up a little bit for you. Yeah, uh, it's not something that you need to be worrying about. It's more something that he needs to be worrying about. Um, you can help him, support him, uh, but other than that, I think that you know, for eight years you guys have been in a relationship, a very strong one indeed, uh, to go through all of this family issues and to stay together. So uh, instead of running, running away. yeah, yes. instead stop of running, running away. I think dealing with it would be better. Of course, because running and that's addictive too. Also, so you keep got, you gotta keep do that, again. keep doing that, and then they gotta chase you, and then that if that repeats, why? Yeah, you're, you're we have only one running. life. It's, that's a waste of time. Don't do that. Just face front. There's a Korean saying that there's no parent that can't beat their child. So beat as in, you know, overcome their child. So in the end, the Not children beat. win. The children win. Mm -hmm. So there's no parent out there that's not going to not agree with their child. In the end, they're going to try and do what's best for their child, regardless of what that might be. They want their child to be happy. Yeah, that's why they go against, you know, marriages and they put them in all those, you know, wedding matchups and all this other stuff. So, right. I mean, obviously, all they want is the best for you. Convincing, he needs to convince them that, you know, you two are good together. Eight years, you guys are still going strong. You know, yes. look at the positives. Mm -hmm. So, I would say that, Joelle, it's not so much your problem, but you need to kind of have him do something. Right. So, don't do your uh, by yourself. Okay. Do it together and stop running. Okay. And Joelle says, uh, I uh, update, they uh, couldn't let go of him, and so they want to control everything. There are parents that are like that, but I think that, yeah, Joelle, tons. your fiancé needs to kind of step up and be like, Mom, Dad, I love you. I'm this however old. Uh, I'll visit, you know, during the holidays, but, yeah, I think we're just going to have to stop it here. Yeah, Anyways. Yeah, uh, no, no. Do we have a time? Well, you can say what? Because, like, um, if... if uh, Joel or your fiance is not getting the money or anything from the parents, you know, they're not, they don't have the much control. Yeah, they don't have the right to do that yeah. for you, pretty much. So, anyways, step it up. Uh, we have a perfect track for you guys. Oh my God. And I'm gonna get the uh, by daybreak is the song we're gonna listen to. Take a listen to this and we'll see you when guys back you with our these second song. <laughs> All right, Tang, who's sitting outside, uh, from a guy's perspective, has uh, posted for our first story. So, Joel, uh, this is uh, a guy's perspective, and uh, Tang is a little bit on the mature side, and also he's been, being Asian, his mom has been setting him up on those blind dates for marriage and whatnot, so he's had his good run-ins with the mom, 
uh, about certain things, especially when it comes to uh, choices that a person makes in life. And so, like everyone is saying, the fiancé has to sort everything out. Uh, what the mom is doing is obviously trying to make the guy feel bad uh, about seeing Joel. Right. Uh, so, obviously, that's not working, which we can see. Um, and uh, he does think that sometimes parents need to understand that children, no matter how much they love them, we eventually have to set up their own families, and it's the children's lives in the future after all, which is true. Um, it's, in the end, my life not my parents. Right. And you see this a lot in any culture. Moms trying to live their life that they didn't get a chance to have through their daughters. Dads trying to live their football glory that they never got through their sons. Uh, which, I mean, obviously it's your child, so obviously right. there's some type of talent that goes through because it's genetic. Yeah. But, I mean, even like, uh, when, okay, uh, you can say that when the parents are really old when they get older and like you know if they don't have any power to control over then you know you might be the one who has to care about I mean not might you have to take care of, of that yeah yes. take care of it that's kind of my um, mind but um, yeah for now you guys you guys are living by uh, living together uh, maybe yeah living together and then you'll you deal with everything on your own for eight years I think they need to stop, and you need to step up a little bit more. Yeah, so the fiancé, good luck to him. Tell Close your fiancé that we're behind him 110% if yes, he needs yes, more support. Yes. Hillen, Tang, and all of our other guys are going to be with, with there as well. Of so, course. next story. All right, next one. Favoritism. Mm -hmm. Something that happens every day at work and at school. Oh, yes, everywhere. It's from USA, from Marie. This week has been the worst. I found out my, that my manager is letting one of the hostess of this restaurant move up to a server position. I've talked to other servers and they said that the hostess that is moving to the position doesn't really help out at all, even when it's a busy night and day. When I'm the hostess for the night, I actually help servers to to take orders, serve drinks, take the uh, to-go orders, pre-bus tables, and also talk to the customer to make sure everything is fine for them. But my job is just supposed to be a sitting a sitting the customer, but I'm doing all this to help the server, and I don't get any tips or ask the server to tip me for helping them. I help them because it's teamwork. But this one chance uh, popped up and the manager gives it to the hostess that always asks to leave early, asks to go on a break, leave the leave the host uh, stand empty for 30 minutes, ask for day off because she is going out for the town, or doesn't even help out the servers on the busy night when everyone is running around. So, this is my question. This hostess, should the manager should have uh, given the position to? I actually think the manager has favors. Uh, yes. Yes? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, yes. but yes. Either that or they're dating. Yep. <laughs> or yeah, I I don't want to. I I'm sorry. It's that blunt. No, but you're it's right. True. No, it's true. It's true. I'm sorry, but yeah. I mean, so this hostess uh, leaves early, asks to go on breaks all the time, yeah. leaves her host stand empty for thirty minutes, always asks for days off so she can go out on the town, mm -hmm. and uh, she doesn't even help out on busy nights. She's either. Okay, I don't want to say this on air. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I yes. think uh, it's going to start getting ready R, like, very soon here. But, yes. I think our listener will know already. I because mean, she has but a, you can see favoritism well, you, in every day. Yeah, I mean, favoritism. Yeah. And also, you can't really say easily to your boss, really? Like, oh, I, I need a day off because I have to get, get out of town? It's like, you, really? That's, if, that's not easy. That's not easy to say. Mm. And not doing the job and keeping that job... There's something. Yeah, Always and it, something. I mean, regardless of how bad the economy is right now, I mean, for somebody to be promoted when they're lazy as, mm -hmm. uh huh, uh uh, mm -hmm. she's either. Oh, see, I I don't know how to say this nicely. <laughs> you were saying it nicely enough. Yeah, she's either doing something with him. Okay, see, sorry, popcorn. <laughs> popcorn, I'm so sorry. Like, sorry. He's okay. like, oh my it's gosh, like, ladies. He's like, stop saying this. Okay, I'm sorry, popcorn. I won't do it anymore. 
I apologize. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, okay, I won't, timing, though. I won't talk dirty anymore. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. It's so <laughs> funny. But, yes. Um, so, either they're seeing each other mm. in the back room or... <laughs> or she's... She's... Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Call her. Seriously. Sorry. It's the only nicest way I can put it. It's the only nice. Well, oh, you're not saying the words. So. Exactly. I mean, yes, you see in movies, you know, the stereotypes of, you know, the girl who's a little bit of lightheaded, you know, and she still gets the job just because she got big boobs and she got pretty, like, you uh -huh. know, pretty eyes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but I mean, you're not at a restaurant that flaunts tank tops and boobies. So unless you're at a place like that where you can just pretty much look pretty and not serve. Then I mean I don't know and it, and then in a restaurant business as a hostess you need tips right I mean in Korea we can't tip uh -huh. unless you go to Itaewon uh -huh. but uh, normally in Korea it's not a There's tipping no tip. uh -huh. yeah it's not a tipping culture but in the U S restaurants you hostess, have to earn you have to get tips uh -huh. you have to that's Otherwise like ninety percent of your earning of course <laughs> that's ninety percent <laughs> minimum wage ain't gonna get you paying bills no. -uh. Uh -huh. You need those tips. So you need to be nice. You need to go to those tables and smile and be nicer to them. Give them more water. Get yeah. them, you know, their drinks faster. Be nice to them. You know, smile at the kid that you think is ugly. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hi, you're so cute. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> you but, know, yeah. you need to work on your acting skills when you're a hostess. Yeah, but uh, she's not the other hostess. And she's not doing anything. So... Uh, she might have a something, like, like I said, she might have a, you know, big breath or b breast or any, like, you know, or like personality or... Or she's meeting up with the manager in the behind. Uh, yeah. So uh, something, there's something going on. So, the, no, sure. obviously there's a favoritism there. Yeah. Um, I've been teacher's pet before. Even though I didn't have good I grades, know. even though I didn't have good grades, I tend to be a teacher's pet, which is quite odd, but true. Um, it's not odd. But it's just because I knew how the teachers felt, I guess. And so, you know, if the teacher... I asked the teacher how they were that day. Well, I, know. I picked up the teacher's child from the kindergarten wow. when I was in... <laughs> yeah. So, uh... So you were teacher's pet, too. So, I mean, I, I know. know how to be favoritized. But, I mean, you do your work, though. So, obviously, this person does have favoritism. And, obviously, you or somebody else that actually does their job... Mm -hmm should have been elevated to that serving spot but okay. uh yeah so there is something going on there but you know what it's 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 getting it's kind of upsetting because this is like it happens everywhere so if you say like i know we kind of understand that what you're um going through but if that's a your boss's favoritism then we can't you can't really do anything or you can try to find something that you're good at. No, that you could try and uh, find in common with your manager. Mm. So uh, sucking up has two different ways yeah, to suck up. Yeah, sucking up is it's, it's not a bad thing. Uh -uh. It's not a bad thing. You have to do that in social life. You have to, like, deal with if you want to keep that job. You have to do it. There's a very... Sorry, this very, is ugly truth, but yes. Yes, there's a very big difference, though, between sucking up and brown nosing. A very, very big difference. If you do it too much, obviously it shows, but not like that. Just a little bit more. Um, just find out maybe what your manager has in common with you. Uh, if they like sports or if they like... Uh, yeah, it's not things. easy, but if you absorb a little bit more, then uh, um, you might uh, have a chance to get along with your boss or your manager. Or you really, the chance is everywhere. So you kind of have to be smart because otherwise it will be the people will see in a different way in exactly. the wrong way so. Tang you need to start watching some comedian shows Nikki Anika oh my goodness that is the title of Tang's message Nikki Anika favoritism exists everywhere but judging from what I've heard that's quite an extreme case like I always say there are people who do things and there are people who do things in front of the boss at the right time <laughs> Maybe yeah, from mean. your point of view, you see her being lazy, but if she is, quote, hardworking in front of the manager, that could be a different story. Right. Probably hardworking doing something else, but, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry. Ready to art. I, I, from what people say, I mean, if your coworkers, and, and my family used to have a restaurant, so I know the restaurant business, and you, you have to be a family. Uh, whenever you have, you know, newbies coming in, part-time drivers. Oh, I mean, but it, either way, you have to have, you have to know each other's schedules and you have to know each other's flaws. You have to kind of pick up on each other to work as a team. If one person is good with orders, but is, I don't know, uh, has tables on the outskirts and so can't get the orders in fast, you know, teamwork. Uh, you know, if you can take the orders for them while they take care of, you know, that area or, you know, get drinks started. It, it's a team effort when it comes to... If you become a friend with uh, the other co-workers, yes, that's possible. But if there's one person who's, you know, uh, kind of do all this, like, little, little, like, uh, I can't really say it, but... Just sucks up or do something. Well, I mean, yes, I think that Chang has a really good point, though. Um, working hard in front of your the manager boss, or the, the manager, boss uh-huh. is always a good thing. Of as course, well. it's a good thing because they always know they're maybe blinded, but you know um, they need people who who they think that they work good or you know work always you know you know they want their restaurant to be good. So exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, I think that, you know, sucking up to a little bit uh, wouldn't be that bad of an idea. Um, Effie says, I could definitely see that she's seeing the boss behind closed doors, but it could also be that they are related. Like My cousin. aunt manages uh, a building in downtown Chicago, and I was able to get a job in one of the companies that was renting one of the suites in the building. I remember them treating me really well and making things easier for me, uh, even after I told them that I wanted to be treated fairly because I wanted to learn how to be a hard worker. They still give me so much leeway. True. Yep. Effie, that's actually a very good point. Uh, they could be related. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, so they could be related too. But anyways, uh, our last story for today, I think we have a lot to talk about as well. Uh-huh. But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick listen to some more music for our second story. Mary, uh, yes, favoritism could be there. Uh, I can already tell that it is. But, I mean, you know, work a little bit harder in front of the boss or maybe just try and work around it. Uh-huh. Cloud9 is singing, yeah, go! I will see you guys after this one. Yeah, no! Wow. You need to stop getting favoritized. Okay, anyways. But <laughs> yes, stop. Uh, our last uh, story for today is actually... It's kind of um, annoying. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I think that uh, the w- in general, the story isn't that annoying. But I can tell why this listener is troubled. I can tell. That well, I mean, because this is very different. Stephanie and I think very differently. I'm a little bit more leisurely when it comes to this type of problem, but Stephanie's like, no. No. So, uh, let's read the story. <laughs> All right. Uni 10105 uh, one, from Canada. All right. I have a boyfriend. We have, uh, we've been together since we were in high school. I love him, but there's one thing that's bothering me. He is cute. Borrowing money from me. Of course, if it if it be, if it's big money, I will tell him to stop. But he's just asked me to borrow a couple of dollars when we go out for the dinner. Usually, he pays for the dinner by using credit card, and then he is asked he is asked me to pay for tips. I don't mind for that because I love to buy him a dinner too. Every time we go out, which is three or four times a week. He asked me to borrow money from some reason. Well, he always say, can I borrow two dollars or whatever, blah, 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 but never gave me back. Hmm, borrowing? When he say this, uh, he is natural and he doesn't even remember that he asked me, wait, am I the problem? What do you ladies think? Um, you're not the problem. He's the problem. See, I told you. I'm a little more lenient when it comes to these things, but she's just like, no. No. No, and, and in the future, uh, he's gonna borrow money, much big bucks. Like, uh, you know, it starts from dollars, a couple of dollars, and then after that, it will be a couple of hundred dollars, and it'll be, you know. Well, okay, this is where I'm quite different. Um, obviously, no. he pays with a credit card. You pay for tip. I mean, that's kind of like that's splitting. Dead. 
I use credit cards too. I'm not but in you're debt. Not, I know you're not in debt. I'm not in debt. But then again, when I go out, if I don't have cash, I need cash sometimes. You know, I use I cards too. No, I mean, when I need ballet, you know, cash or whatever, sometimes I need cash. Yeah. And so if I can borrow it from somebody, but yeah. then really? it comes to two dollars. No, three. I'm not, I'm not gonna pay them back. I might buy them dinner, but I I'm know. not gonna pay them back. I know, I know, I know. But three or four times a day, and I'm we we are not sure it's only like two dollars or something. It might be a bigger box. I mean, if he you needs, never know. if he needs cash for like cigarettes, I mean that I can. You can't give it to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, that's like small amount of money. That's not a big box. But I'm tell, I don't just this the behavior is bothering me. Me no likey. No. Well, him being comfortable of borrowing money from you is, I think, a little too early in the relationship. If you guys are engaged and you guys are using your money oh, and together, then, yeah, that's then that's okay. Um, but if you guys are still dating and it's not quite clear as to how you guys are using your money and yet he keeps borrowing from you, yeah, that could be a very bad habit. I think it could be a habit of that. Now, if he, if, if my boyfriend pays for the dinner... I okay. Our personality is like okay. Maybe I can buy a coffee, or yeah. of course I will tip the, the 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 host, whatever. We will do that, but he said the boyfriend would not ask me to do that. That's so. There's the yeah. There's part, a difference. Yeah, that's the part that I don't like it. Well, then that's the thing, though. Uh, in today's society, there's also kind of a double standard there. Why do well? Technically, I'm in recent rather studies, buy a dinner, no, but seriously. yeah, but no. In recent studies, women are making more money than men do these days, and yet, still in Korea and in the U.S. and a lot of different countries, women still want to be treated with the guy who doesn't make as much money as she does to treat them to dinner and to treat them to drinks and for the guys to always pay for everything. Yeah, if the girl has a brain, they're not gonna just let the boyfriend to spend all those mo- all the money. But. Exactly. Um, I think it is a little bit of a du- double standard, um, but uh, in general, in a relationship, I can buy dinner. I don't, I don't mind that. I mean, I don't always have to have my we boyfriend buy dinner. We can actually make the dinner. Yeah, we can make dinner. Yeah, we can <laughs> Dutch pay it. It doesn't matter. It I mean, doesn't really matter. But I think it is a little bit about the morals. You're not the one that's wrong here. If you feel uncomfortable about it, obviously it's because he's stepping into your uncomfortable zone. Right, you know what I mean? exactly. That's bothering, that's why our listener is uh, saying it's bothering me. And you already think that uh, mm, borrowing, you're questioning yourself. So it will cause, it will cause much more bigger problems. So, yeah. I think that if you already feel that it's uncomfortable for him to be asking you this, there's always a, there's already a problem. Um, I'm thinking that maybe your boyfriend is just like that with his friends as well. Yeah, like so a maybe personal, he was, yeah, it, but it just it might be his personality. But if that bothers you, tell him. Yeah, tell him. But this, okay, think that I know that this is uh, just two or three dollars. But if it bothers you, then you have to talk because for me, like um, I live with uh, other you know artists and other you know the the the, the, the coworker at the you know, from the agency, and um. Actually, it bothers me sometimes because of of food, mm. and I don't want to deal with that kind of a small problem. But if that bothers you, then you're the one who's gonna just like be crazy. You're the you're the one the, the who will get mad. But other the other uh, people, they're not gonna know until you tell them. Actually, well, true. Um, like I, like we were talking about earlier, if it's a personality thing, he might not know that this is a problem, uncomfortable or problem, bothering yeah, you. or bothering you. Um, in any relationship, conversation I think is really key. Um, yeah, don't think that this is just a small, and I don't think that this is a your problem. Just, yeah, you have to say it and deal with it. Um, for you to just say, uh, in, just tell your boyfriend that when he borrows stuff, it just tell him that if he doesn't have the cash to do it. Just tell him that you're going to just take over dinners, you know, yeah, every once like in a yeah. while. Instead of, okay, I'm going to pay with my credit card right now, but you have you to tip. tip. Yeah. Uh-uh. And it's just kind of like, uh, oh, okay. okay. Uh, I was thinking about it any buzz, <laughs> but thanks for telling me what exactly. to do. Exactly. Exactly. I you think wanted- that's the, yeah, I think that's the situation. Yeah, that's the key. That's the problem. So It's mm-hmm. like, you know, nonchalantly talking about how, you know, t- tonight during dinner, babe, uh, how about this? 
uh, do you want me to pay for the movie or do you want to pay for the movie? You know, you could. That's a conversation yeah. that could be in any healthy relationship. But for him to act like he's gonna pay for everything and then get there and be like, oh yeah, so since I bought the movie tickets, you buy popcorn. And uh, you have a, do you have a ballet? Yeah, and do you have cash? Because I need to pay for parking. Yeah. It's kind of like. It yeah. depends, I think, in the stage of the relationship, though, too. Uh, if you guys have already been talking about money or you guys have shared money in the past, then then mm, this shouldn't be that uncomfortable mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are really thinking about, you know, the reason this why, next step. Right. The reason why our listener is so uncomfortable because of that uh, you guys are not, you know, marriage or being in a serious relationship. I mean, you guys are in the... I'm sure that you guys are in a serious relationship, but... Oh, my goodness. When it comes to the money situation, then the relationship will not um, be... stay longer, so... Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, talk about it. Uh, but girls... It's easy okay, to so talk. Here's a little bit of a tip for girls. Don't call your boyfriend up and be like, we need to talk. <laughs> that is the worst way to bring up anything. Even if it's about something good, you tell your boyfriend, we need to talk. Yeah. We need to talk. Uh, meet me after or whatever. Then we need to talk. Yeah. Maybe that's bad. Uh, mm. uh, just, you know, act, go to go to dinner and just uh, when uh, you guys are talking about, you know, dinner or plans or like, oh, what do we want to go to eat tonight? Yeah, Where do we want to go? Why don't you first then? Yeah, lead first and be like, okay, babe, uh, you know what? I want to buy dinner tonight. So uh, let's take, over, get, take care of everything else later. Okay. You know, just kind of tell him what he should be doing. And I don't mm -hmm. think that that would be a bad idea mm -hmm. either. All right. Well, um, money does become a big problem when it comes to relationships. Yes, and please, so. financially, oh my goodness. Cause I mean, I've been splitting the bill is okay, but yeah. Just if that little girls thing and will guys, bother. Yeah, girls and bother. guys, let's be careful when it comes to like, you need to buy this for me. Because you're the guy or you're the girl, okay? Ugh. None of that. No. All right, what we're going to do is uh, say goodbye today with pretty pics and young us up with a track. All right. <laughs> Bye.